With my image captured in my platform pack and application packs downloaded, I'm ready to create my answer file. An answer file has all the information that Smart Deploy needs to deploy your image with limited or zero interaction from you or the end user. To get started, I'll first go to the Activities workspace and click Reimage Devices and then click Create Answer File. This will open the Answer File wizard. Before we get into the standard stuff, let's take a look at what the advanced options look like. On the General tab, I can decide to make it an attended deployment if I would like to manually step through the deploy wizard and change options as I go. This will also give me the option to partially automate my deployment. If I want to name the computer during deployment, but leave everything else automated, for example. I can also decide to shut down after the image is deployed. This may be helpful if sysprep and domain join need to happen at a different location. I can set the registration information and even configure auto login. The disk options tab allows us to format the disk or try and use the existing partitions. Wipe and load is useful when trying to retain data that may be on the device we're imaging. The task tab gives us the ability to run commands or scripts during different phases of deployment. The network and wireless tab allow us to pre-configure network settings if needed. Going back to the main wizard, I'll first select my image source, either on the local network or in cloud storage. Now for this demo, we're using an image saved on our local network. If you'd like to see the process for performing a cloud deployment, head over to support.smartdeploy.com to watch the end-to-end -end process of re-imaging a PC over the cloud. First, we'll need to provide credentials for the deploy wizard to use to access the network shares for the image, platform packs, and application packs. I'll enter my account and then click Next. When selecting an image, we can select a WEM file on the local disk and it'll automatically convert the path to a network share for us. Your image doesn't have to be in one, any one specific place. You can change this UNC path to whatever you'd like. Because a WEM file can contain multiple images, when you select your WEM file, you'll then select an image within it using this drop-down menu. The image name and description are what we specified during capture. And when we're ready, click Next. When selecting the platform pack location, the default is the same location as your image WIM file. If your image happens to be in the Smart Deploy Images folder, the Deploy Wizard will automatically try the Smart Deploy backslash platform packs folder if it doesn't find it anywhere where your image is saved. If you're keeping them in separate locations, you'll need to specify the path you want here and then click Next. We can then select applications and tasks for my library to be included in the deployment. These will be applied after the sysprep portion of the deployment completes. I'll pick the packs I want to install, set the order that I want them to install in, and then click Next. When it comes to the naming convention, we recommend setting the name you want Windows to use in the BIOS asset tag field in system settings before starting the deployment. Then setting the read from WMI property to the higher priority. We can also use the existing Windows name if you prefer that. Since I'm just testing, I'll move generate custom name to the top and then set a scheme with random numbers, which is handy for avoiding duplicates. On the user data migration page, I can elect to copy existing data from this machine to a network share or local disk if I'm using wipe and load. In doing so, Smart Deploy will move the user data, apply the image, and restore the user data automatically. Since this is just a test machine, I'm going to skip user data migration for now and click Next. You may recall from the image capture video that I mentioned that you can provide a Windows product key during capture or when you create your answer file, but not both. The answer file wizard is detecting that I didn't specify one when I captured my image, so it's giving me the opportunity to do it now. Since this is just a test and I don't want to activate Windows when I'm done, I can leave it blank. If you have your Windows volume license key, this is when you'll want to specify it. Now we can click next. The network identification page gives us the opportunity to set the target device to automatically join my domain. If I select and specify a domain here, on the next page I'll be asked for a different set of credentials specific to joining the domain. I'm going to click back and switch back to workgroup since I don't have a domain I need to join and then click next. I'll select my time zone and locale settings and then click next. On the client install page I can elect to install the Smart Deploy client. I recommend installing the client on all of your devices because it will enable you to install applications or run tasks remotely as well as update drivers using platform packs. 
If you are installing application packs, you will have to enable this setting. I'll check the box and then specify the host name for my Smart Deploy Console host and then click Next. Lastly, I'll have the opportunity to review this summary and then finish the wizard. I can then switch to the Answer Files workspace to view my answer files, where I can see at a glance the path to the file, which WIM file it's using, and which image is being deployed from that WIM. And with my answer vault created, I'm ready for the next step, creating my deployment media.